bare knuckle too, betting on the streets of H2 in the West. Definitely the pinnacle of uh, beat em ups for the Sega Mega Drive in my book. Okay, let's give it a start. Okay, we've got your uh, average four, set of four uh, hard knocks. We've got Max there, the obligatory uh, big fat muscle slow ass bastard. Alex, the uh, cool guy, you've got half the bird in there. And of course, you've got Sammy, the complete wimp. But I think we'll go for Blaze, as most of you probably would. Okay, so here we go. Binnacle 2, as you probably guessed, and if you didn't, you're probably a bit retarded. It's the second uh, Binnacle game in the series. Released in 1992. I remember playing this for hours on end when it first came out. Okay, your characters have got the standard array of uh, punching kicks and you've got your jumps there. But the thing that sets uh, Bare Knuckle apart from a few other beam ups out there is the fact that you've got some cool special moves. Which are uh, pulled off pretty much like um, a one on one beat em up, really. So you see, you just uh, push forward twice and punch. Get that lovely back flip, well, forward flip type move. Step up to death and throw the knife as well. There you go. Um, if you hold down jump and the punch button, you get this lovely rotation kick here. It has a special button on its own there, there's a backflip. And push forward in the special, and you get a Chun Li like fireball. One favourite thing is the way you can jump over your enemies like that. Okay, let's get some pole, bash these over the head. Boss time. One of the good things about Streets of Age too is the amount of combinations you can pull off with your moves. You, know, you can be punching the guy in front of you, then you can turn around and suddenly start smacking the guy behind you. You know, let rip with a couple of specials or whatever. Just give me a chicken there. Well, he didn't last long, did he? Bare Knuckle 2 has got far more beefier graphics than the original Bare Knuckle. Uh, this could be partly due to the fact that uh, it is a sequel, and it was probably one of the first Mega Drive games to feature a 16 megabyte cartridge. It also must be noticed that there are quite a few fair different characters within the game. Um, as you probably saw in uh, last, last month's Retro Call, we uh, did undercover cops for the Super Famicom. Um, practically all the stages had the same bad guys on them. Was there a Bare Knuckle 2 seems to introduce a new bad guy almost every stage? The quality of the backgrounds themselves are also quite nice. Far more detailed than the first game, and a lot more colourful than the second game. I mean, than the third game, I should say. One nice feature about Burnacle 2 is when you play a two player game you can actually uh, combine forces by one person holding the other person sort of like this, jumping over and um, flinging them to perform some sort of uh, charge attack. 
or some sort of uh, heavy duty combo. Unfortunately, I'm playing on my own for the river sand bastard, so I can't show you that at the moment. While this is a great game and everything, it's still not without its problems. Sometimes we can do special moves, such as that fireball I just did then. She'll keep repeating the, the actual move until it hits somebody. Which doesn't seem like a bad thing, but the, the fact that it takes energy from you every time you do it. You can push it off, you can actually lose quite a bit of energy without actually hitting anyone. Ah, these guys are really what you have to do here is get rid of these guys and sort of kick them off the bikes. Which is easier said than done. Oh, lucky today, don't miss me. There you go, there's one off. One thing which must be noticed about the Japanese version has got these uh, ladies in leather, as I like to call them. There you go, with the whips. Completely removed from the Western version, for what you expect. for a bit, there you go, take that. Let's get to a sexy pose, there we go. Just that being picky. Now one of the most annoying things about the game are these fat bastards. I don't know what it is, but whenever they put a fat bastard in and beat him up, he's always a pain in the ass. You got them in Final Fight, you got them in Streets of Age. Everywhere. Good old elevator level. Can't have a beat muck with that one. Right, except Final Fight on the Super Famicom where they cut it out. So why should you buy Bare Knuckle 2? Well, if you've got a Mega Drive then you can't play Final Fight unless you've got a Mega CD, which is probably the best walk along beat him up of the air then. So that's why you should buy uh, Beats of uh, beat Rage, flipping heck. That's why you should buy Bare Knuckle 2. It's probably the best uh, beat him up on the Mega Drive. Far better than the first one, even though the first one is good. And absolutely cacks on the third one, I think. The third one looks bloody awful. The graphics on it don't look anywhere near as good as this. And uh, the sound on it is pathetically bad. I don't know what Yuzo Kushido was thinking when he made the sound for the third one, but um, I know what I'm thinking. It sounds like it's bloody crashed. Anyway, so we're going to give uh, Bare Knuckle 2 a retro core score of 8 out of 10, which is quite good going.
Joel Caliber for the Sega Dreamcast. Can you believe that this game was made in 1999? Unbelievable, it still looks amazingly good even today. So let's uh, start it up. Originally you only have um, the bottom row of characters to choose from. But the more you play the game you can get the extra characters by opening up secret secret uh, items in the um, museum section. But uh, I'll show you that later on. First let's take a look at the game. Hang on, I'm going to zoom out a little bit there. I think be better. And um, I think we'll go Bowen Oakley. So what can I say about Soul Calibur? Hmm. It's pretty hard to start off really. Uh, let's see. Well one thing I will say about Soul Calibur that it certainly stood up to the age of time. You know, coming five years later and the game still looks very nice. You know, if you saw this on your PlayStation 2, the game for your Xbox, of course you'd be thinking, ah, it doesn't look as good as other beam ups, but it still does look fairly good. I mean, just look at the detail on the actual characters. Texture mapping is amazing. They, you know, the amount of uh, detail that's gone into this game for the time is just unbelievable. You know, the backgrounds are really imaginative too, such as this one. But uh, enough about the graphics, because uh, you know we can all see how good they are. We can all hear how good the music is as well. So probably what you want to know is how does the game play? Well, the game plays quite well, actually. Uh, if you play the play Soul Edge in the arcades on the PlayStation, or Soul Calibur 2 on the uh, GameCube, or whatever, I think you'd be pretty familiar with the way this plays. You've got your standard buttons, you've got uh, your weak, medium, high attacks, you've got your kick there, you've got your block, which uh, I've killed it now, so I can't use it. I'm well, doing various uh, motions on the D-pad in combination with buttons brings out all the different moves. Each character's got a fair amount of moves, you know, you're talking around about 30 odd moves each or, or more. Um, but the thing is, the, the connection between the moves is uh, so fluid that it doesn't seem like it's hacked on at all. Also, a combination of two buttons and different pad moves can bring you out different moves. There's a throw from the side there. If I take a from the, if I throw from the front, the back, or left or right side, to get a different type of throw each way. A downside with uh, Soul Calibur is, uh, you know, pretty much like many uh, one on one beam ups, you can get some complete tit who hasn't got a clue how to play the game. Yeah, he somehow he just manages to win by bashing the buttons. Which can be quite annoying, especially when you're trying to pull off some impressive combinations. But, for the really skilled player, whoop, like me there, you can actually get, get away with um, playing people like that. Because if you've got the skill, you can actually counteract the moves and uh, take them out. Which is always good to see, because those people think they're so cool. Okay, we've got the uh, Sand Arcade Battle, which we just played there. First battle, team battle, where you can uh, sort of do a King of Fighters style. Uh, time attack, basically see how many people you can kill within the time limit. Survival, see how long you can last. Extra survival. Uh, this is quite an interesting one. One hit and you're dead. So basically, whoever gets the first hit in is the winner. So basically, you've got to see how many people you can uh, beat. Uh, 
uh, and the obviously practice mode and um, options. But one of the better, better things about this, or one of the more interesting things about this, is the museum. Exhibi Oops, sorry. Exhibition theatre, which you can actually watch uh, your guys do the moves. Just watch them battle out and uh, show you this stuff. Gives you some information on the character as well. He's showing us stuff there. Double nunchucks. Oh, only until there, he reckons. Welcome back to the stage of history. Character profile section. Give you a profile on the character. Obviously, this version is all in Japanese. Touch about the weapons, the stage. He lists all the different voices, all the different things he say. You can see the character's ending, and uh, just select a different character. Opening direction is a pretty fun uh, extra option. This gives you the chance to uh, change the introduction to the game. Okay, Mission Battle, this is where um, you unlock all those secrets which I've just shown you. Basically, you choose your character. And um, choose the mission from the map. As you can see, most of them have uh, completed. I've completed all of them. Full points, whatever. Except for this little bastard here. Which um, you gotta do an unbreakable combo or something against Soul, Soul Master himself or Soul Edge, but uh, I just can't do it. Hidden around the map are some secret places where you can actually battle. There's one right here. You hear the noise? So click on the mission, it tells you what the mission is. Complete the mission, get yourself some points. Use those points to unlock the prizes in the uh, gallery mode, which we saw before. You see, actually, fighting a gold sofita here. Some of the mission modes have a very strange um, points to them. Actually, this one, the characters seem to be sliding quite a lot, thanks to the wind. Seem to slide in there. Which makes it incredibly difficult to battle. There's another one where um, you actually sink into the floor, which is meant to be quicksand. Um, let's see if I can find that one. It's over here somewhere. It's down here. Oh, it's not this one. So I'm actually going to give uh, Soul Calibur a very high score of 9 out of 10. You probably wouldn't do. Why though? Well the reason is that I bought Soul Calibur on the day it was released and I was playing it, you know, well over a year later. The game has just got that, it's just got that much in it that, you know, you'd be playing it for months and months and months on end. You know, even if it's just to unlock all the secrets, which I still haven't done because, you know, four or five years later. So if you want to beat them up to last year, one that looks good, one that plays good, one that sounds good, Soul Calibur is the one for you. If you just want one with fancy graphics to get Dead or Alive, or if you want one for more technical playability, go for Virtual Fighter 3. But um, in my eyes, uh, Soul Calibur is definitely the uh, number one. 3D fighting game for the uh, Dreamcast. So it deserves a good score of 9 out of 10.
Yumi Harakase. Very popular back in the mid 90s. It's a very nice platformer for the Super Famicom. But not just your average platformer, it's more of a puzzle platformer. So the game stars our little girl down here, who unfortunately I can't remember what her name is. Eventually she can jump and throw out this little uh, grappling hook. And basically the object of the game is to get to the top of the level and exit the door. Sort of like a load runner type thing really. So let's see. Um, the hook that you've got, the grappling hook, has a few, diff few um, different things you can do with it. So just put up here. If you pull down on the pad, you can uh, wind the hook up or wind the uh, rope up that the hook's attached to. Push down, the, push down on the pad, and you can uh, sort of let yourself down a bit, see like that. And left and right gives you a little bit of a swing. See, you can use it to save yourself as well. Not only is the hook used for the, um, getting yourself from one place to the other, but you can use it to attack the enemies. Throw the hook at them to startle them. Like this, or grab them and wind them in, put them in your backpack. The graphics are very, very nice. They're, pretty, they're a bit simple, not too special, but um, they certainly do the job. The music, um, I think, is very nice. Gives that nice, relaxing atmosphere to it. Great sound, I should expect, from the Super Famicom. Oh, you little bastards. Got the push coming up you down. Yeah, the only downer to this game is um, if you get hit by one of the big enemies, Instant death. The small enemies will just start here, but that usually ends up with you falling down to your doom. Yeah, that's got to be a bit of a pain, you know. Just uh, pick this up. Oh, that's pretty really good. Now he's gone. In between levels, you get these little cutscenes which tell you um, the little hints on how to get through the level. But you probably already figured them out by the time it tells you anyway. Uh, this game is also available on the PlayStation, and uh, of course, you had to put it into 3D, didn't they? And it just doesn't seem as good. This 2D classic is far the best. I'm not too sure how many worlds there are in it, but I've been up to about the 10th screen. It starts to get really tough after that. So there you have it. Umi Harakawase. Oops, do a bit of a jump here. Ow. Very cute, very nice, and very pleasant a little platformer game there from uh, for the Super Famicom. And um, actually, I'm going to give it the retro core score of uh, a good 8 out of 10. If you have to do something just to sit down and relax and you're fed up playing your average puzzler, then this is the game for you. The music's very nice. It'll just uh, let you mellow out or whatever. It can get a bit tedious. But then again, what games don't get a bit tedious?
を頼すため、ステルナ町、サウスタウンに乗り込む。ロバートダル、ヨウの、そしてライフ、ヨウの共にサウスタウン。サウスタウンで彼らを待ち受ける者。It's a fighting for the、uh, Neo Geo. One game, one fighting game that、uh, certainly changed the way fighting games were. And you'll see why in a minute. Whoa, what was that? The screen zoomed out. That's right. I think Heart of Fire was the first game to feature the zoomy screen mode, which was later used in games such as、uh, Samurai Showdown and so on. In fact, this、uh, was probably、uh, the one of the first、uh, Neo Geo fighting games to actually be any good. Since the first Battle Fury was a pile of crap. They like my play build, they like my playing skills, really.、Uh, one thing that must be said about、uh, our fighting is that it features this very nice.、Uh, System where you can actually、uh, see your character get bruised the more you fight. You can see、uh, at the moment he has got no scars on him whatsoever. He starts to get a bit of a big cheek there. See. Oh, that doesn't keep being a pain in the ass. Come on, fuck off. Yeah, you can see his face there, it's a bit、um, swollen. The game itself is,、uh, isn't without its problems. You know, the collision detection can be bloody awful at times.、Um, You know, sometimes you'll be like miles away and you'll be getting hit. Sometimes your, your attacks don't connect, which can be a pain in the backside. And sometimes attacks can take far too much energy off you. And、uh, sometimes I can just be complete crap at playing the game, but、uh, I don't think that's a fault of the game, really. I think that's my fault. Go a little bit because you can hear his lovely porno voice later. Another problem which I found with the game is、um, sometimes your moves take too long to come out. You know, it could be like a good second before you, know, you do your move, your character will do his little bit of speech and then do it, and then、uh, decide to attack. It should be a right pain because you end up getting smacked in the face. While he's、uh, saying a special move speech. One good thing though, is,、uh, which I do like, which I'll tell you in a minute, because hang on, we're just going to listen to Robert's porno voice now. This is great. Do I have to fight again? Do I have to fight again? <laughs> great. Oh, here we go, here's the bonus games. You can choose a different type of bonus game. Here, you do the special moves, break the ice, or the bottle tops. I think we'll go for the、uh, bottle tops. Stop the energy bar when it gets to max. I don't like that. Oh well. These bonus rounds pop up between every other level. I think it's、uh, every two or three levels they pop up. But they teach you how to do, how to do a new move every time you complete a bonus round. Okay, I'll tell you the good bit, which I was still going to tell you before. You can see underneath the energy bar is a green bar, and that is actually a special move power.、Uh, there you go, you just sort of fact,、uh, an example of.、Um, Do your moves, speak, and get killed while you 
that needs to be your move. Uh, anyway, that uh, bar underneath your energy bar, that's used for the uh, special moves, such as your fireballs, your kicks, or whatever. And uh, if that goes down, you can't do any special moves, which is really good for those cheesy bastards that used to just had the had kittens on bloody street fighting all the time. Just stand there in the corner, blasting you with the bloody things. Can't be doing that on this game. But don't worry, once you've uh, used up all your special energy bar power, you can actually refill it up again by holding down all the buttons. And he will uh, sort of spirit, bring the spirits in, charge himself back up. Wow, look at that. Pulled up on a string dragon punch. This is actually on a fireball somewhere. There it is. Just charge myself up. I also love the feature where you can jump off the walls. It's sort of a rebound attack, very nice indeed. Go pawn up voice time again. Rats, let's fix it up. Rats, let's fix it up. Not to know who did that voice. Here you go, King. Could be a man, could be a woman, could be a lesbian, who knows? If I'm sure I know which one you guys would love it to be. Special mention must go to the sound, uh, it's really beefy, very nice. Unlike Street Fighter, which had pretty tinny sound, that good tunes, mind you, but uh, the sound itself is a little tinny. There's a lot of items, features really good, beefy audio. Gives you that feeling of actually you know, making contact with the enemy or whatever. So there you have it, uh, Art of Fighting for the uh, Neo Geo. Also released on the Super Famicom and the Mega Drive. Mega Drive version had far better graphics than the Super Famicom version. But um, it didn't feature the scaling effects, which uh, this one does. But the Super Famicom version did feature the scaling effects, but looked like complete and utter total crap for the uh, background graphics. In fact, um, why not have a look and see which version you think's better? So there we go, we just had the Neo Geo version. Let's go and take a look at the Super Famicom version and tell me what you think. Okay, well here we are, Super Famicom version. Well, that's got the intro there. Sounds not too bad. Speech is missing, but at least you can see this one in English. Okay, let's uh, have a look at the game. Okay, rob it like we just were. As you can see, the background graphics don't look anywhere near as good as the uh, Neo Geo version. But watch, it does have the scaling though. Yeah. This seems quite a bit slower than the Neo Geo version too. I can't find me jump off the wall, there it is. Oh, it's a hell of a lot slower than the Neo Geo version. And you can probably notice that the, that the game plays in a box. Okay, that was the Super Famicom or Nintendo version. Let's take a look at the Mega Drive version. Okay, here's the Mega Drive version. Okay, different intro. Music's nowhere near as good. But the music's quite pathetic. It's started up. Okay, different options screen, uh, different character select screen as well. We've got Robert again. Ah, but the background looks a hell of a lot better than the uh, Super Famicom version. Characters are smaller though. Half the speech is missing. It is a lot faster though. Mm. 
much faster than Super Famicom 1. Same as the Neo Geo Speed, I'd say. So there you have it. Art fighting on uh, all three systems. Neo Geo, Super Famicom and Mega Drive. And um, I'd say Neo Geo version is the best, of course. And, uh, Mega Drive actually comes second, the Super Famicom version coming last. But uh, enough about that. We're going to give uh, the Neo Geo version a retro cost score of only. S we're going to give it, I don't know, six and a half, seven. Okay, we're going to give it a seven out of ten. It was very good for its time, but it does have its problems, you know, really awful uh, collision detection and so on. Uh, bloody cheap bastard computer opponents. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun. It's a good game. And it was one of the first to bring out the uh, zoom in uh, backgrounds. And out for Tata B for the uh, Sega Mega CD, better known as uh, Annette again in English. You might recognize Annette from uh, games such as El Vianto, where she's the main uh, character. There's Ernest Evans, which uh, has got his own game. And El Vianto, I mean, not El Vianto, Annette also features in uh, Ernest Evans as uh, Ernest's girlfriend, I think. Can't quite remember now, it's been that long since I played it. Okay, so uh, Annette's got her own game now, but what type of game is it? Well, it's a game with a real bad looking introduction for the start. But uh, <laughs> we'll forget about that bit. Um, one thing I will show you is uh, this very nice option screen. Yep, yeah, very sexy indeed. Okay, so uh, let's start up the game. That's right, it's a walk along, scroll and beat em up! Okay, the game does actually have an animated intro which um, I've missed out just to save time really. Just get into the game. Okay, well, this game has got to be said is as hard as nails. That could be because of the collision section is dodgy. It could be because uh, the controls are a bit iffy. Or could be just that I'm crap at games. But uh, I think I'll blame it on the game. Okay, so, um,. And at the game we've got your standard punch, in this case she uh, sort of uh, slashes out with a sword. She's got a lovely little kick there. And a um, bit like Streets of Age which we saw before, or Burn Knuckle. Push forward twice and she can run, and uh, press your attack and she does that lovely kick. She's also got a nice jump charge type thing there. You may have noticed that there aren't many enemies on the screen. In fact, there's only one at the moment. And that's because they all bloody wait off the screen until you kill the ones which are already on. Which is going to be a right pain in the backside. Um, one thing which I don't like about this game is uh, there doesn't seem to be many sound effects apart from my nets. Voice as she uh, attacks. It's actual, when you hit enemies, there doesn't seem to be any connection sound, except for the other uh, puncher pillow type sound. And the other little grunt from the baddies. You may have actually noticed uh, a little uh, green bar up in the corner. What that, what that actually is, is uh, our magic bar. And when that fills up to a certain degree, we can um, let loose one of our destructive magics. The higher you get it, the more powerful it becomes. The picture in the center of the screen at the top, you can see, it looks like some sort of dragon. And that's the type of magic which we've got. Um, so we'll just let one of the magics out. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, bloody hell, that was, that was scary, wasn't it? I'm sure the enemies were uh, shocked at that one. This is, ah, no enemies coming on now. Um, I have to say that I'm quite disappointed with uh, Wolf Team's attempt here. The controls are alright, and, you know, it, it plays fair enough, but, uh, you know, instance, like an instance just like that, you know, I was waiting ages for the enemy to come on screen. You know, nothing to do. Oh, the music's fading out. See the audio for you. There you go, see, we're still waiting for the guy to come on screen. Come on, you little sod. There you go, stop doing your fall up on a string, guy, punch. So, um, yeah, it can be a bit bored away if the enemies come or whatever. Come on, you little sod. So I'll give him a magic series like stuff. Oh, that was a scary magic, wasn't it? Here's a big boss guy which is going to kill me in no time. So anyway, um, that's a netter game for you, really. Not a very good game. Could have been so much better. Um, it's quite tough, and as soon as you die, you get sent straight back to the beginning of the level. So you can appreciate that um, I won't be uh, <laughs> continuing. <laughs> okay, you might be wondering why is the audio a little bit out? Well, that's because I'm actually running this on an emulator because I can't be bothered getting the one the mega out. So uh, the music is a bit uh, delayed. With the, when you play it on the actual hardware, it's not like that though. It's uh, perfect. So um, we're going to have to give it again a very sad score of only 5 out of 10. Yep, you probably guessed it. It's a Castlevania game. Zakumajo Dracula for the uh, Sharp X68000. I tell you, this game certainly puts the Super Famicom first. Castlevania 4 to a shame. Let's get the game running so you can see what it looks like. Like a lot of Sharp games, this one features a. Uh, different types of uh, audio which you can select, you can uh, run it from the shop's internal uh, sound chip or one of the uh, two of the sound cards which uh, you can plug in. I'm running it from the shop's internal sound chip because I think that one sounds the best. There we go. You can actually attack when you jump. Rotation there. Looks quite similar to the first level on the Mega Drive game, really. So Castlevania on the uh, Sharp X68000 is actually very nice. Probably one of the best 16-bit uh, versions. Visually, it's uh, quite impressive. I'm sure, something be out here. Maybe not. The audio on it is very nice. Maybe not as good as the Super Famicom, maybe, but um, certainly better than the Mega Drive version.
Yeah, get away from me, little slug. Same dead. As you see, as you can see from the map, that the game is actually quite big. That's only a part of the map as well, which you can see there. A lot of the, the attention has gone into uh, detail on this game. You can see from the background, it's got multi power like scrolling. You know, the animation on the main character and some of the enemies is very nice as well. Just a shame that most people didn't have the opportunity to play this one, except for the people who live in Japan, that is. Of course, uh, Castlevania on the uh, shop isn't exactly perfect, like uh, most of the Castlevania games can be quite annoying when uh, you know, enemies come that close to you, you can't hit them because of the range on your whip. And uh, when you die, you do get sent quite a bit, quite far back. But uh, you know, that's just Castlevania games full stop, and uh, you can't complain at that. If you like, feel like you continue from the very place where you died, you'll be completing them in no time whatsoever. And that's not what you want after sh shelling out a lot of the money for the game. So if you got yourself a Sharps X68000, I really recommend that you get Castlevania. In fact, if you probably got a Sharps X68000, you probably already do have Castlevania. I think one of the essential purchases. So uh, we're going to give a... Uh, Castlevania on the shop, a good retro score of 8 out of 10. <laughs> New Zealand story. One of the classics of the of the eighties. Uh, Save all your little kiwi mates. From the evil, um, well, I don't know what they are really, from the evil things. One thing which will aid you in uh, New Zealand so is to grab yourself one of the uh, flying um, vehicles, that's what you could call them, ranging from uh, psychopathic uh, duck type things, there you go. He'll help you fly through the level. Won't help me get up there though. Hey, right, time to get off. New Zealand Story is one of those classic old uh, arcade action games which you don't really see these days. Oop, there's a ray gun. Yeah, there are many different weapons and things to pick up in a New Zealand Story. Such as here we got the nice ray gun. Uh, disappear before I could get hold of it. A shame. Uh, this balloon which I'm on features uh, different types of uh, different types, different powers. So you can get hit quite a few times before it actually disappear beneath your feet. Into the 
water we go. Nice little cute features when you're in the water, you can spit out the enemies like that. Which I always found quite amusing. Here's my kiwi. Hey, let's go. So there are absolutely hundreds of bloody levels. Like this. Each level gets a bit more confusing each time. I'm trying to find out which way to go. And it becomes even more and more and more confusing as the game progresses. And like all games, New Zealand Story has a boss. And just as you'd expect, they're nice and cute. Here we go, we've got a frozen uh, pink whale here. Whoops. Which I remember rightly, actually, after it's swallowed by this one. If I remember rightly, to complete it. That's right. This swallows you up, and you have to uh, shoot from within side. By the way, that little E you can see in the corner is um, an E icon which I picked up. And once you get uh, all the icons, you get a bonus. A bit like That's uh, basically a New Zealand story for you. Absolutely tons of maze looking maps. Um, lots of little fruits and gadgets to pick up. And uh, basically you guide yourself around through the levels to find your Kiwi friend to rescue him. And uh, that's all there is to it really, but it's one hell of a challenging game and will last you an awful long time. So there you go, that was a New Zealand story, and uh, we're going to give it a retro score, a retro core score of um, a nice 7 out of 10. Bit of a classic game, uh, won't appeal to everybody, it gets a bit annoying, you know, every now and then. But um, for those who want a real challenge, I think you'll find New Zealand story like the game for you. Psycho Fox for the Sega Master System. Mario before Sonic came along, made in uh, 1989. Actually, not that long, uh, not that far before Sonic, really. Um, game stars our little fox guy here, who can actually change into uh, various other guys. He thinks he's got a monkey, a tiger, and a hippo. And of course, he's got his little chucky egg, chucky egg friend here, which he can lash at people. There you go, or lash at the uh, crab, hammer crabs, or at least that's what I think they are. And the game is actually quite like Magic Cloud's Flying Turbo Adventure, which we saw on uh, Last Retro Core. Or did we see it on Last Retro Core? I can't remember now. But anyway, it's quite like that, which is a Mega Drive game. When you kill enemies, they drop uh, little icons, which you can use to. Uh, to your advantage, such as uh, magics and so on. So let's just have a look here. This um, magic stick here, select that, and it allows you to change characters. Each character has a different uh, skill. Uh, Psycho Fox, who we just were, main character, all round character. Hippo, he can charge through walls. The monkey can uh, jump high, and um, the tiger can run quite fast. But I'm going to actually go with the monkey because I quite like the monkey. And, um, it's much easier to get through the game actually with the monkey because you can jump over the many enemies. Oops. Guarantee it's going to be a baddie in there. There you go. Yeah, anyway, throughout the game you see these little eggs which you crack open and uh, you can get yourself little specials from there. Such as uh, magic sticks, money, or uh, your little uh, chucky egg guy if you lose them. Whoops. Whoa, shit. There you go. Luckily, your little chucky egg guy. So it acts as a shield, so if you get attacked while you've got hold of him, he's pretty much safe. You won't actually die. You just lose him. If I select one of the other magics, I think it's this one. This should uh, give me a shield. There you go. And if some water comes along, I can show you the magic... Uh, oh, it's the end of the level. I'm just going to show you the magic uh, slide in your bum trick, but um, <laughs> it looks like you won't get to see it. Just like Magical Hat, you've got a... Um, bonus section. Place your little uh, Psycho Fox down and uh, guide them through, let them uh, run through the maze. And if you're lucky, unlike I am, you might get a bonus. But in my case, it went straight into the hole. So um, I'm afraid we're going to have to <laughs> pretty rush this uh, Psycho Fox uh, feature, unfortunately. 
then we another time. So Psycho Fox gets a, a retro core score of a 8 out of 10, which is a very good sc score. Very good classic platformer, especially for the Master System. Looks good, sounds pretty shit, but then again, most Master System games do sound pretty shit. 